Super Tuesday was a stunner with Joe Biden scoring a series of impressive wins, redeeming a candidacy that some had written off as dead. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders is pushing forward, vowing he'll not be stopped by the establishment. Two campaign trail experts join us today to talk about the state of the Democratic Party in this turbulent election cycle, its impact on Donald Trump's re-election bid. They are Susan Estrich, campaign manager for Michael Dukakis's 88 presidential run. She's also an attorney, author, and political commentator. And Reed Dickens, who served as White House Sec Assistant Secretary Press for George W. Bush. He's co-founder of Marucci Sports. And he's now, by the way, a registered independent. You left the party? A few years ago. It left me. Okay, let's get into that. What's Biden's greatest strength, Susan? He's not Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not any of the others, Larry. I mean, there was a moment, I think, this past weekend when everybody kind of looked to their left, they looked around, they looked around the table. Mike Bloomberg had, you know, had his moment. He was gone, and they said, well, who's left? Correct. I think... Um, I asked a lot of my friends on the, on the, that were participating in the Democrat primary a question that I think President Obama was asking people, President Clinton was asking people, what the heck are you doing? What, what, what the heck are you thinking? Uh, I think Pete and Amy getting out early and timely was thoughtful. I think it was courageous. It's something that the Republicans couldn't bring themselves to do in 2016 to narrow down to a, one alternative candidate. So I think now you have a head-on-head -head match. Okay, the uh, conventional wisdom is that the Super Tuesday map was in Bernie Sanders' favor. Why, what went wrong? Well, I think a few things went wrong. It was in his favor so long as the moderates were dividing the vote, Larry. The minute it went one-on-one, -on -one, then Simple the advantage, mathematics. the mathematics changed completely. And one thing to remember about Super Tuesday, if you're as old as we are at least, you can remember when the states, the southern states all moved up because back in the 80s they wanted to, to, to bring the south back to the table. And what they ended up bringing to the table or who they ended up bringing to the table was Jesse Jackson because a lot of these southern state primers on the Democratic side are dominated by older and African American voters. So what you saw was Biden's base. And as between Biden's base of older voters and Bernie's base of younger voters. You want to put your money on the older voters and the younger voters? I'll think, put my money on the older voters. You think Trump a great deal worries about Biden? I would think he would. I don't try to put myself in his head very often. <laughs> um, Probably in all, best in all seriousness, head. Yeah, in all seriousness, I don't try to uh, handicap what he's thinking, but I will say if he has strategists, if he has smart people around him, um, they would obviously much rather, I, believe, I think, r work, uh, run against Bernie. Um, remember, this Super Tuesday was interesting. The mathematics wasn't, it wasn't that surprising, the Biden surge, right? Because all these people dropped out. Everyone who was supporting Bernie was already supporting Bernie. Um, young people generally don't go vote, but he has a very impressive ground game, get out the vote effort. And in primaries, you, you see all these national polls, and it makes me laugh. You and I have been talking about this for 20 years. Rudy Giuliani was winning by 25 points in the national polls and never got over 3% in a primary, right? And so these are, these are local elections. They're about who, who actually gets out to vote. Susan, will the Democratic Party unite <clears throat> behind Biden? Most of it will. The establishment Democratic Party is, you know, <clears throat> saying its prayers this morning and, you know, escaping from sure defeat. I think, I think the National Party will. The trick is going to be how long can Bernie keep this weekly match going and how will you bring his folks in at the convention? Do you s expect Bloomberg Reid to give money to Biden? Absolutely. Sure. He, he, he's, he right now he's pack? facing two choices. If he fades away, he just got a zero return on investment for $700 million or whatever, and that's not what he wants to be remembered for. I think he built an incredible media operation, an incredible data, um, data bank. Um, he's, a, he's a data guy, and he's bringing a lot of high-tech data to the table. It'll be very important for Biden uh, and helpful to Biden. You agree? I completely agree. I mean, my old friend Doug shown has been polling for Bloomberg for three months every night. They've got a lot of information. They're very savvy. 
And I think Bloomberg is not going to be the problem. The, the, the Democratic Party as an establishment party will come together. The challenge is going to be the AOCs. The challenge is going to be, is Bernie going to come in? You know, that's the issue. Elizabeth Warren, I don't know where she's going to end up, but I think she's going to be part of the group. Look, there's one thing that unites most Democrats, and that's Donald Trump. Why uh, don't the young vote? They come to rallies, but they don't vote. I was sharing this story with you. I think we've talked about this before. Uh, in 2000, I think there was about 18% uh, turnout in the under 30 vote. So they started Rock the Vote and spent hundreds of millions of dollars in Jay-Z and celebrity well, and everything. Was it 19%? And the next, the next year, it was 18% again. 18%. And so, I, I, so I, I, I can't answer. I've been doing say, this for years. I can't speak for young people anymore, but I, I can say they're not reliable on vote on election day. Uh, do you think this Bloomberg support will be a major help? Is that, if he goes that much money, it's got it right. I do. I think we learned the headline. Uh, and for all the people worrying that you can buy an election, no, you can't. You right? can't right? We found out the headline is you can't buy an election, <laughs> and I think that's good news, right? Uh, Bernie, Bernie lost a little bit of his scare tactic there, um, but I think his what's important about Mike Bloomberg is his infrastructure, right? He built a world class almost. You know, Ken Melman, David Fluff type organization in about 100 days, which right. is incredible. Faster than the Chinese built hospitals, right, right, right. if you could say that, really. Do you think sad. Trump is beatable? Oh, I think Trump is definitely beatable. I mean, look, Trump should be 20 points up, Larry. You've got the strongest economy. You've got great unemployment numbers. If this were anybody other than Donald Trump, he would be sitting like Ronald Reagan was sitting in 1984. The fact that he's not tells you that a lot of people, they may agree with some of his policies, but there's a lot of uncertainty around this man. And, and it's going to be a question of, can Joe Biden convince them that he's a safe choice? That's all he needs to be, is safe. So Joe Biden needs to be careful that he's not John Kerry. And um, where you can't just be the safe choice. And that's the only thing I might slightly differ on, is that uh, if you're just a safe adult, uh, in 2004, all of the experts, and I mean everyone, and the media, George W. Bush had a 29 approval, three consecutive quarters of negative growth. Uh, he had a lot of things, no WMD. I mean, you could go on and on. And the, the establishment on the Democrat side and the media said, well, any adult candidate that sounds rational and sane is going to win. Well, but liberals from Massachusetts may be an exception to that rule. Maybe. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is Joe Biden, I think Joe Biden is a very electable candidate. He looks like a president. He sounds like a president. He's been the vice president for eight years. I will likely support him. But he has to be careful because Air Force One uh, and the, inf the incumbent, uh, the founding fathers built this thing where for continuity of government versus right, right, the incumbent always has a little bit of an advantage. A big right. advantage. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I think it's going to be tough. You mentioned uh, John Kerry. I was at CNN then, and I, uh, and all day we were looking at exit polls and stuff. We thought Kerry was going to win. That was the beginning of modeling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I. Oh, catch I you was off. just going to say I was sitting on the air, and I was looking at an exit poll over at Fox, and I realized there were way too many women in the sample, mm -hmm. and it was one of those moments where you open your mouth and nothing comes out. Because you know you're looking at a poll. We, we even discussed. So, so I was about to make this point. <laughs> if you remember, we made we had this discussion. Is that I actually had a pool of reporters down in the bottom of the of the headquarters, and I brought them up, and Matthew Dowd explained to them that there were too many women and not enough Hispanics. That's in the sample. right. And so I brought them up, and then we had a little 20 minute briefing, and within one hour, all the polls. I know changed. it was. Oh, but it was just awful to be sitting there. Bernie and keeps at the, saying that uh, the Democratic establishment is ganging up on him, trying to snuff out his revolution. Is that fair? There's I don't a, know. A, who is the Democratic establishment? I think members of Congress are not eager to have a revolution right now. I think they're eager to hold on to the House. I think most people who are on the ticket somewhere are looking to get reelected or get elected in the first place. And I think there were quite a few Democrats up and down the ticket who were nervous about having a socialist on top. I don't think that's, that's unfair. I think that's just a realistic assessment of what the odds look like in different districts. Think about how many words, if you diagram that sentence, the establishment, who is that and where are they, right? Mm -hmm. uh, number two, ganging up or snuffing out a revolution. By definition, you can't snuff out a revolution. Um, and then you have this kind of, is it fair? Uh, nothing's fair in politics. So I think if you look at that sentence, it sounds like uh, he probably sees the handwriting on the wall that his support has a ceiling. Well, and, and he, the, the whole idea was bringing in this whole wave of new voters. And we haven't seen that whole wave of new voters coming in. And that's no disrespect to Bernie. I mean, this has been going on, Larry, for years. It's not 
easy to get people who are not used to voting mm -hmm. to vote. All right, Barack Obama has not publicly endorsed anyone, although he said he will support and campaign for whoever the party picks. What do you think? What's the Obama factor? Oh, Obama is only a plus for Joe Biden. I mean, to be by Obama's side reminds me of the good old days. I think Barack Obama can raise money. I think Barack Obama can build crowds. But at the end of the day, presidential politics is about the guy or the woman who's the in the ticket. center of the stage. It's the top of the ticket. That's all that matters. Votes aren't tangible, fungible, or got about easily given away. You've got about 100 million people that'll wake up after Labor Day, drop their kids off at soccer, turn on the television debates, look at two people, watch for maybe 10 minutes, and make a decision, right? And so uh, I, I think Barack Obama, the question, people throw around words like support and endorse and campaign. What really matters is how active they are. President Obama will support Bernie Sanders, but I promise you he'll do more events, he'll fly to more fundraisers, he'll make more phone calls for Joe Biden. He is also still very popular, isn't he? Of course. Yes. Of course. Should be. Should be. Yeah. He's a great president. Yeah. Okay, what does Trump do? Tell me about the Trump-Biden campaign. So what's interesting is Trump has fundamentals, you know, he's the incumbent, he's got Air Force One. Right now, if, even with all the uh, market fluctuations, uh, people's 401ks have grown drastically in the last four years. Um, the stock market's done well, the stock market's still up 30% even with all the drops. So he has, in theory, all of these uh, tailwinds, right? Uh, but the problem with Trump is Trump, right? Um, he, he can't get out of his own way, uh, even on the coronavirus, right? He can't, uh, he had about nine messages in one speech. Um, so <laughs> if he would, it, I actually said this in the last 30 days against Senator, uh, Secretary Clinton, um, if he would just stop talking, uh, he would actually do a lot better. <laughs>